mention that I never did an unboxing swatch for the Kuratake Gansai Tombi watercolors. They've been popular for a while now, and while I did a pretty um, inclusive review over at natosu.blogspot.com, and I'll link that right here, I never actually swatched the colors for you. Since I've been looking at a lot of Gansai Tombi sets, I thought that would be a, this would be a great time to sort of, uh, you know, fix that. So I have here the beautiful 36 color set sent to me as a Christmas present several years ago by my friend Heidi. You can check out their gorgeous watercolor artwork by checking out the description below. I'll have a link to their Instagram. And I have played with the set a fair bit and I went ahead and filled out the map long ago. But I thought we could really benefit from an unboxing swatch today. So it's going to be a little bit hard for me to show all the colors at any given time, and I apologize for that. And I'm also going to have to do this in batches because 36 colors, that's a lot. At my best, I can get 16 on a sheet this size, so we'll need at least two. And I already put down some black pigment-based paint to help demonstrate opacity. And I'm doing two types of swatches. I'm doing a graduation or gradation test where I water it down with water to see if the properties change. And I'm also doing a mass tone test. And once I finish doing all of the swatches, I'll read the color numbers to you. The names are in Japanese and label it so that it's a little bit easier for people to follow along. I also plan on making scans of all my watercolor swatches available in an archival form online at some point in the near future. I just haven't really decided what format to do that in yet. And we are swatching today on fluid easy block watercolor paper. This is a cellulose based watercolor paper. Because these are Gansai Tombi watercolors, they're technically designed to be best at doing etagami. And that is typically done on a washi type of paper, which handles watercolor quite differently from the papers we're used to in the West. And I mostly just bring that up as a point of disclosure. Some people have struggled to use these. Um, for Western style watercolors, particularly if you have a heavy layered style, these are not necessarily the best pick for you. As colors have a tendency to lift back up, get a little muddy and reactivate. But if you have kind of a light handed style, these can be great for you. Or if you're interested in practicing etagami, these could be great for you. Gensai Tombi does not just refer to this one type of watercolor, it actually refers to a family of watercolors, or watercolor style, rather a style of manufacturing watercolor. And they are made very differently from Western watercolors and are intended to be painted thickly on the page rather than in thin layers. They feature bright, saturated, vibrant colors may be dye based rather than pigment based and may not be entirely light fast. So that's something you're going to want to consider. Most Gensai Tombi style watercolors feature large pans that are about the size of three whole Western style pans. And Kuretake is not the sole manufacturer of these types of watercolors. There's actually several different brands in Japan that will manufacture these, but Kuretake is one of the more common brands in the US. I have an overview of different types or different brands of Genzai Tombi watercolors coming up in the future. And if you guys are looking for a thorough review of these watercolors, you can check out the blog post right here in the cards. You may have noticed I swatch my watercolors a little bit differently than some of the other watercolor artists here on YouTube Swatch. The opacity test and the mass tone tests are both pretty important to me and those tend to be kind of 
excluded from other swatching videos. Every watercolor artist is going to have their own unique needs. And I'm a watercolor comic artist, so this is something very relevant to doing watercolor comics since a lot of my illustrations feature ink line art. And it's also just good to know the opacity of the watercolors you're dealing with. It'll help you decide on your order of operations when it comes to painting. So we have, we're actually about almost halfway, like right in the middle of being halfway swatched. I am gonna have to grab another sheet of watercolor paper because I'm not gonna be able to fit all 36 in. Pretty pleased though by how many I actually was able to get on here. And I am swatching with a Sumi brush. This would be more in keeping with what people would paint Hedagame with. They also use water brushes. So that could also be an acceptable form of swatching to provide valuable information. But I do want to be able to get nice saturated colors and I struggle to get that from water brushes sometimes. I do have several videos on edigame, mostly just me painting them here on this channel. If you're interested in seeing one of those in process, and it's just sort of a light, friendly way to do watercolor, very accessible, very immediate, and they are typically done as postcards. So I think it's a beautiful way to be able to make some art to send to someone you love. And because they're so loose and kind of, it's okay if they don't turn out perfect. In fact, that's part of the charm. I feel like edigame is something that anyone who wants to send something handmade to someone they love, I think that's something you should experience and I think you should play with that. All right, this is the first half of my Kuretake Ganzai Tambi set swatched. I just switched over to yet another Fluid Easy Block watercolor plaid pad that I marked with, again, pigment-based ink. And now would be an excellent time to take a moment to thank my patrons, my art nerds on Patreon. Their support enabled me to afford multiple Fluid Easy Block watercolor pads at the same time of the same size so that I can continue to do these sort of tests continuously without having to wait for the other pad to dry and then come back to it. So thank you art nerds so much. When you're doing a lot of art supply reviews, that time really adds up. And I really appreciate that you've given me the ability to continuously finish my work rather than have to wait 30 minutes. It's always the small things in life, right? Like that are, that tend to be the the ones that really, really, really end up counting for a lot and mattering, mattering the most. Because I use those funds from Patreon to be able to purchase the, not only the re review materials, but the materials I do the reviews on. So sometimes brushes, often pads of paper so that I can get consistent results. And when I was just doing the blog and I didn't have a Patreon to support that, it was very, very expensive for me to keep up with this. It was a very expensive hobby. So I am sincerely appreciative of that help because I go through these pads very quickly when I'm doing demonstrations and stuff. Some reviews will utilize, not even counting the field test, some reviews will utilize like three or four sheets of watercolor paper. And sometimes I can get away with the inexpensive Canson bulk watercolor paper, but sometimes it really is best if I use the nicer paper and shoot, when I do reviews on cotton rag paper, that, as you guys can imagine, really gets expensive. So I tend not to do my swatch tests on the cotton rag unless I really think there's going to be a difference in the colors. So as you guys can probably see, we get a lot of color options in the 36 color set. The thing with Genzai Tombi style watercolor is yes, you can mix your own colors. However, you're usually painting so fast that it is more convenient to be able to rely on pre-mixed colors. Which is why we'll get so many variations of what would seem like the same color for many Western artists. Think of these as convenience colors. They're pre-mixed so that you can work faster. And 
typically Ganzai Tambi tend to be a little bit cheaper than Western style watercolors. You're also gonna go through them faster because the intention is that you're going to paint thickly and somewhat opaquely, and you're not gonna be using the colors too diluted. That's not really the point, especially if you're doing act, you know, edigame paintings. The intention isn't light, delicate colors unless you pick light, delicate colors. So think of these as sort of like opaque watercolors or a step in between gouache and watercolor and handle them like that. This said, I think that Ganzai Tambe style watercolors are great. I really enjoy them. Um, I have a particular favorite set that I also will use for Western style watercolors because it's a very flexible set. I like the color selection. I like the affordability. And I think these can be really good for artists who are somewhat interested in watercolor, maybe aren't going to do as many layers as say I usually do in my watercolor tutorials, as you guys have probably noticed. Or maybe you just wanna add a little bit of spot color here and there. But I definitely think for a watercolor artist who's interested in experimentation and trying different art styles from around the world, these can be an excellent addition to your studio. And you certainly don't need multiple sets the way I have multiple sets. Don't feel like that is a requirement. Another thing that's interesting about Genzai Tambi watercolors is they frequently include metallics and this is something, or even neons. Um, this is something that is not typically included. And I misuse my space. I've got three metallics to do and no room to do it. Um, this is not something that's typically included in most Western sets. And Kuratake even makes a Starry Sky set that is nothing but like gold metallics. And I have an unboxing swatch of those here on the channel that you guys can check out if you're interested in the sparkle sparkle glitter glitter. All right, I have now swatched all of my colors. So I'm gonna let this dry and check back in with you guys. So the Kuratake Gansai Tambi has had plenty of time to dry. And fear not, I know this is a lot to take in. So I'm going to scan these and put them online so you guys will have access to the swatches. Thank you guys so much for watching this Kuratake Gansai Tambi swatch video. I hope this has answered some of your questions and I hope you'll check out some of my other Kuratake Gansai Tambi videos here on this channel, as well as some of my other brand reviews for Gansai Tambi watercolors. Hope to see you guys again really soon and I hope you guys will read my Kuratake Gansai Tambi post. Bye guys.